This is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Christian Martin? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, consider supporting me on Patreon, and check out my podcast on YouTube, Bella Grande Media. I will put the relevant links in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the homicides, then offer my analysis. Christian Martin was born in 1969. He married a woman named Stacy Stone. The couple had three children before getting divorced years later. Martin served in the military and was deployed in the Middle East. He would reach the rank of major. He was an army ranger and eventually an Apache helicopter pilot. In 2004, Martin married a woman named Joan Harmon, who was already married to a man in Tennessee, like she was married to that man when she married Christian Martin. In 2011, Martin and Harmon moved to Kentucky. Martin and Harmon had their marriage voided in 2012. I imagine they would have gotten a divorce, but they didn't need one because the marriage wasn't valid in the first place. Martin's wife would plead guilty to bigamy in 2016. This is a felony, but she was placed in a diversion program. After Joan Martin had moved out of Martin's house, she and a neighbor named Calvin Phillips went back to the house to retrieve some of Joan Harmon's belongings. Calvin Phillips and his wife Pamela lived across the street from Martin. Another neighbor who lived across the street was a man named Edward Danzero. This becomes important later. As Joan and Calvin were going through the house, they stumbled across a laptop and two discs. They took possession of the items and turned them over to the authorities because they believed that the items had secret information on them, like military secrets. The discs had the word secret actually written on the front of them. In addition, they found a photograph which appeared to show bruises on one of Harmon's children, allegedly caused by Christian Martin. Martin was arrested and charged with a number of offenses, including simple assault, mishandling classified information, and abuse of a sexual nature against Joan Harmon and her children. Calvin and Pamela Phillips believed they were being stalked by Christian Martin. Pamela had told her son that she had seen Martin in a field near their residence. Calvin, Pamela, Joan Harmon, and Edward Danzero, the other neighbor, all took a concealed carry class. So they wanted to carry firearms ostensibly because they were worried about Christian Martin. When Calvin Phillips was asked why he took Martin's military computer and discs, he responded by suggesting that he saw a lot of classified material that he knew wasn't supposed to be there. Calvin Phillips had also been in the military. He would go on to say that Joan Harmon told him that she was afraid of Martin. Calvin Phillips told private investigators that Joan Harmon never said that Martin was harming her or her children in any way. So we see kind of mixed messages here. After this statement, Martin's defense considered Calvin their primary witness. So he would have been a witness for both the prosecution and the defense as far as the court martial. Now moving to the timeline of the homicides. Sometime on or around November 18, 2015, about a week before Calvin was to testify at Martin's military court martial, Martin broke into Calvin's residence and shot him with a 45 caliber pistol. After this murder, Martin used a 22 caliber firearm to kill Calvin Phillips' wife, Pamela, and Edward Danzero. He placed their bodies in Pamela's vehicle, just the bodies of Pamela and Edward. It was found abandoned two miles away in a cornfield. It had been set on fire. The fire is what initially drew attention to this case. Military investigators detained Martin, and a SWAT team raided his house, but no charges were filed at that time. In May of 2016, Martin was found guilty of assault on a child under 16 and mishandling classified information. This was at his court-martial. He was found not guilty of all the other charges. He was sentenced to 90 days in jail and dismissed from the U.S. Army. After serving his time in jail, Martin moved to North Carolina. In 2018, he started working for a subsidiary of American Airlines. On May 10, 2019, Martin was at the Louisville International Airport getting ready to fly an aircraft. He was arrested in connection with the 2015 murders 
in Pembroke, Kentucky. He was charged with three counts of murder, two counts of first-degree burglary, two counts of first-degree arson, and three counts of tampering with physical evidence. The theory of the crime was that Martin really wanted to kill Calvin Phillips, but Pamela Phillips and Edward Danzero showed up at the house, and he murdered them as well. In June of 2021, Martin would be found guilty on all 10 charges. His sentencing is scheduled for September of 2021. It's likely he will receive life without the possibility of parole in accordance with the jury's recommendation. Now moving to my analysis. This case has attracted a lot of attention. Many people have serious concerns about the legitimacy of Martin's conviction. They say he was denied due process. There may have been a cover-up and there are viable alternate theories of the crime. Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Martin is guilty. I will start with the inculpatory evidence. On November 27, 2015, nine days after the murders, the sister of Calvin Phillips found a dog tag belonging to Christian Martin on a shelf in Calvin Phillips' mudroom. In April of 2016, about five months after the murders, she found a 45 caliber shell casing on the back porch of the house. The shell casing was connected to a Glock pistol found in Christian Martin's safe. Bullet fragments found in Calvin Phillips' body were connected to that same weapon. Before the murder, Calvin Phillips was set to testify against Christian Martin in his trial, although, as I mentioned, Martin's defense maintained that he was their witness as well. Now moving to the exculpatory evidence. Cell phone records indicate that Christian Martin was in his home all day on November 18, and on November 19, his phone was not near Pamela Phillips and Edward Danzero. Joan Harmon and her son Elijah invoke their Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination at Martin's trial. They, of course, would be allowed to do this. It is a right, but it does seem exculpatory to Martin. The jury never heard about this occurrence. One has to wonder what those two may have been trying to hide. Would that information have been helpful to Martin's defense? Martin's fiance and her children supplied an alibi for Martin, saying that he was with them on the day of the murder. A defense expert said that the bullets that killed Calvin Phillips were probably not fired from Martin's Glock. No physical evidence other than the 45 caliber shell casing and the dog tag could be tied back to Martin. No DNA, no blood, no hair, no fibers, no anything. A contractor who did work at Martin's house said that he saw Joan Harmon with a gun tucked in her waistband. It resembled a Glock. A manager who worked at the same restaurant as Joan Harmon said that Harmon was excited about the murders. Joan Harmon's co-workers actually called the police because her behavior was so strange. The co-workers suspected Harmon was involved in the murders. The Army indicated that Calvin Phillips and Joan Harmon may have been in an adulterous relationship, even though they both denied it. In addition, two witnesses who were not allowed to testify claim they walked in on Calvin Phillips and Joan Harmon having sex. Joan Harmon was in possession of Pamela Phillips' cell phone after the murder. Harmon had access to all of the firearms owned by Martin. According to witnesses, on the night that Martin and Harmon separated, Harmon said, If you divorce me, I will ruin your life and I know how to do it. At the time of the murders, Joan Harmon had a boyfriend. His name was William Stokes. He is the brother of Sergeant Ed Stokes, who works for the Sheriff's Department. Ed Stokes was actually at the crime scene on the first day of the investigation before being removed because of a possible conflict of interest. Another brother of William Stokes, a man named Doris Ray, worked as a firefighter. He responded to the car fire, the one involving the bodies of Pamela Phillips and Edward Danzero. The county had about 50 volunteer firefighters, and the brother of Joan Harmon's boyfriend happened to be one of the three that responded that day. Joan Harmon may have had a history of deception. Here are a few examples. She allegedly told military prosecutors that Michael Atkins, the father of her son Elijah, had been decapitated in a logging accident. When the military prosecutors caught up with Michael Atkins, they were surprised to find that his head was still attached. So either Harmon was lying or Atkins had a detachable head. Atkins told them that Joan Harmon was the devil. Harmon allegedly told military authorities 
that her husband, Carlos Guerrera, was a soldier with the Guatemalan Special Forces who specialized in killing people with a knife. As it turns out, he was a forklift driver at a chicken plant. Not quite an elite military operator, although the chickens were probably terrified of him. They probably called him something like the forklift fowl killer or the chicken farm phantom. Jones Harmon's sister said in a recorded interview that while they were growing up, Harmon was a heavy drug user, lied frequently, and once falsely accused their father of a crime. As far as the 45 caliber shell casing and the dog tag, how did the investigators miss these two items? So they searched Calvin Phillips' home, but didn't find either one. Why were the items recovered by the sister of Calvin Phillips and not by the police? It really doesn't make any sense that they were found at the crime scene. Starting with the shell casing, why would Martin, a former U.S. Army Ranger, leave the shell casing at the scene? He certainly understood that a semi-automatic pistol would eject spent shell casings. Furthermore, it would have been fairly easy for someone else to recover the shell casing from when Martin fired that gun in the past and plant it at the scene. Moving to the dog tag, the prosecution's theory of the dog tag was that Martin took off the dog tag when he was cleaning up and forgot to retrieve it. There are two problems with this. Why would Martin be wearing a dog tag in the first place? Was he concerned that if the murder went bad, no one would be able to identify his body? Was that really his priority? And a dog tag seems like an item that someone who wanted to frame Martin would quickly select to plant at the scene. Among other information, of course, it contains his name. That seems a little bit too convenient. It's like a lazy choice for setting someone up. Considering all the evidence, was Christian Martin guilty? In reality, I think he probably was. He had a motive and was certainly physically capable of the homicides. It would have been difficult for Joan Harmon to physically commit those crimes. What about the legal standard? I don't think he was guilty by the legal standard. I think this is one of those cases where, based on a preponderance of evidence, he did it, but he was not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. There are many reasonable doubts in this case. Joan Harmon allegedly wanted something bad to happen to Christian Martin and had access to his firearms. The shell casing and the dog tag would have been very easy to plant. And there's no real physical evidence connecting Christian Martin to the crime scene. I think there are two main ways this case can be viewed. The first way, Christian Martin was some type of monster who managed to avoid getting in any trouble before meeting Joan Harmon. After this, perhaps due to the acrimonious nature of their relationship, he snapped and decided to kill three people. The second way, Christian Martin was an upstanding military officer who became involved with a woman who wanted to destroy him. Perhaps she was successful. There are many people in each camp, people who condemn him and those who support him. No matter what happened, it does seem clear that Martin and Harmon had a destructive relationship, one that wasn't good for either one of them. Acrimonious relationships can take on a life of their own. They often pull outsiders into the drama. These people may be trying to help. They might be trying to cause harm. They may be looking for sex. I think that is the theme of this case. Everybody wanted to get involved in this relationship. No matter what the reason, it's dangerous to become involved in someone else's fight, particularly when romantic partners are fighting. It's unwise to assume that it's easy to figure out who is the bad guy and who is the good guy. Each person is going to say things to get people to empathize with them, to get people on their own side. Often in these horrible relationships, both people could be categorized as bad guys. Both partners treat each other horribly. This means that a third party coming in from the outside is doomed no matter who they attack or defend. Those are my thoughts on the case of Christian Martin. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.